Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're gonna watch Vladimir Putin defending Islam and the Quran and taking a stance against the Quran burner of Sweden. For people that do not know, Vladimir Putin has been very vocal in the recent past about protecting Islam, standing up for Islam, and that it is not a human right to attack the Prophet, may peace be upon him, or to attack Islam. Moreover, he's been cooperating with Ramazan Kadyrov, which is the Chechen leader after all, and a Mufti himself. Guys, before we jump into the video, you know the drill. Leave me a thumbs up if you like the content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Moreover, we have brand new merch, so check out the links in the description box. With no further ado, let's have a look. This поступают иначе, не уважают религиозные чувства людей. И еще говорят, что это не преступление. В нашей стране это преступление. So this is absolutely amazing to see and I believe that this is the very first time that we see a Christian leader of an Orthodox Christian country standing up for Islam and making it constitutional, making it a crime to attack Islam. Within America, for example, you do have religious freedom. However, I have not seen a Christian leader stand up for Islam and making it a crime mocking Islam. Of course not, because if you look into America, you have episodes of South Park where Jesus is mocked. So therefore, a nation that doesn't protect their own dominant religion won't protect a minority religion either. However, what we see here in Russia, in Russia we do have many Muslim states, be it Chechnya, Dagestan, Tatarstan or many, many more. This is a display of tremendous leadership, that the Christian leader is protecting Islam within his own country. And guess what? Under an Islamic state, the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book, would be protected as well, of course. Many people don't know that Christians, for example, yes, they do have to pay a tax. However, they do not have to go to war. This is the rule under a true Islamic state as far as I understood it. And please correct me if I'm wrong. The Muslims will do the fighting for you. They will defend you. So the Muslims are defending actively the Christians and the Jews within their own countries. They are defending their synagogues and churches as well. So this is something absolutely unseen before. We have to appreciate this and applaud Vladimir Putin. People might wonder why Vladimir Putin would speak about this. Guys, really think about this. This wasn't a random action of some psychopath. There was not just a guy that randomly burned a Quran and then the police forces came and they deported him. No, Sweden allowed this event to happen. Do you understand this? Sweden gave this guy a platform. They gave him police protection to burn the Quran. This is why this is political, obviously. MashaAllah. See, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. They made it an event. It's not just a random guy on the street burning a Quran facing consequences. No, quite the opposite. This guy got police protection. Here you see a policeman standing. Here you see the barrier behind his stance. This was an organized event by the Swedish government. Look at this shaitan. Uh, it's fine. We know his destiny, so... More place in Jana for us. There you go. They granted it for him. 
Why would you grant such a thing? And now generally ask yourself the question, I'm gonna go to Sweden, I am a European citizen after all, and then I'm gonna ask the government if they're gonna allow me to burn the Torah or the Talmud. Let's see what will happen. On the holiday itself. Amazing. Look at him smiling. So happy. It's not only about inflaming the feelings, man. They make this look like some sort of social justice warrior movement. This is not what it is about. We as people hold certain things sacred. For example, the Americans hold their constitution sacred. We the people. And back in the day, Christian nations would cherish their Bible. The point is, of course, that we as humans need structure and we need to have something that we obey and we need something that we respect. Modernity, however, wipes out all of those things because modernity is based upon moral relativism. There is no right and wrong, there is no good and evil. Your opinion is just as valid as my opinion. There is no gender either, there is no male or female. So if you want to be a toothpick or a coconut, you can be that, no worries, because there is no biological truth anymore. A penis is not a penis any longer, a penis can be a female penis as well. Don't you know? Haven't you heard the news? This is moral relativism. In such a society, Society, nothing matters and nihilism reigns supreme. We have no values anymore. This is why you see women being promiscuous as well. The Western man does not value a virgin any longer. Why does it even matter? Even virginity is just a concept, a social construct. This is what Planned Parenthood says. So then you look around and you realize you can do what you want. There is no value in anything. We do not value religion. We do not value God. We do not value ourselves anymore. We are just monkeys and monkeys can have fun run around, drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes, take drugs, be promiscuous, eat junk food, get an abortion, get a vasectomy, and in the end ask the Swedish government if you can burn the Quran. Brave new world. That's amazing. It's not about feelings. It's about values. What you gonna do about it? War. They all talk about feelings. Who cares about feelings, man? You don't understand that this destroys societies. It has nothing to do with feelings. It's practical. Yes, absolutely. And this is why I am against free speech. What does free speech even mean? Free speech to insult and mock and disgrace? Again, all about feelings. That's a dumb response. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the only statement that was alright.
All right, that is it for today's video. Yet again, we can only applaud Vladimir Putin for standing up here. On the other hand, the statements of the other nations, boo-hoo, my feelings are hurt. What will that solve? The real issue at hand here is the nihilistic West. It is the moral relativism that is pushed by the West, where nothing truly matters. People do not understand how truly detrimental this principle is for humanity. They like to brush it off as something benign. Oh yeah, well, you believe in religion, ha ha ha, I believe in science. It's not about that. Once you remove God from the equation, you have no moral basis for anything anymore. Do you even understand this? Probably not. Atheists don't get it. Every time I talk to atheists, they will say, oh, but well, I'm a moral person after all. How can you say that I'm not moral? The real question is, why do you even care to be moral if there is no judgment upon you, if there is no right and wrong, if there is no afterlife, if there is no basis for your morality, it does not originate from anything, but everything is determined on Darwinism and evolution. Why would you even care for the concept of morality? It is so backwards. It is so ridiculous. The religious framework is not only superior, but it holds true and it is congruent. It is linear. We determine that there is a God, an ultimate creator of everything. This God puts the rules into place. And moreover, this God is the standard of mercifulness, of goodness, of forgiveness. Everything stems from him. So this is what we strive towards too. A godly standard given to us. A true distinction between good and evil. In our worldview, there is right and wrong wrong. In an atheist worldview, there is not. If an atheist tells you, for example, that ch is wrong, the question is why? The atheist will have no answer. He will simply tell you, yeah, well, I don't have to tell you that it's wrong. But the real question is, yes, you have to. Where does it come from? Why is it wrong? If we are just biological beings, just evolved monkeys, and there is no higher power, no higher judgment, what stops us then from pursuing everything that feels good? Exactly. Absolutely nothing. And this is what you see in this society. This is why we do have junk food. This is why we do have Tinder apps. This is why we do have prostitution, narcotics, etc., etc. Because the human body simply seeks pleasure over and over again. And we do not have a spiritual teaching that constrains our human body. If you look into Islam, for example, we advocate for early marriage. But if you cannot get married, what do you do? You fast. When you're fasting, you're imposing discipline onto your your human body. So it's all about self-control. It is all about righteous self-control. But the atheist does not have to control himself. He is just an evolved monkey and can do what he wants. But at the same time, the government will tell you that you cannot do what you want. You can drink alcohol. Yes, that is fine. But you cannot take heroin. Why? They're both detrimental narcotics. Why can I take one but not the other? Then they will tell you, no, you cannot get married before 18 years old. But hey, go out and you can have sex when you're 16 years old. You can drink alcohol when you're 16 years old, but you cannot drive the car when you're not 18 years old. Those are the secular rules of Europe. What are they based upon? They're not based upon God and they're not even based upon biology. So the Western system tries to confine you to this biological body. It tells you that you're not a soul in a human body. You're just this evolved body. And once you die, the lights go off. But at the same time, it restricts the pleasure of your human body. You can do certain things, but not other things. Don't you understand how irrational this is? If you were truly atheist, then everything would go. And guess what? Internally, you all know this. Because you subscribe to this atheistic doctrine, this is why you want to rebel consistently against God. And this is why you push the limit further and further and further within the restrictions of your system. Now, you cannot get married to multiple partners, so you just hop from one affair to the other, from one night stand to one night stand, from one drug to another drug, from one cheap high to the next. And then in the end, whoopsie, big surprise, you end up depressed. As Muslims, we know that only in the remembrance of Allah, our hearts find peace. And if we're not remembering Allah, we surely will be depressed.
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon or via merch, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.